Hi, I'm Christina Bergston with the Animal Law Firm where we are fighting for the underdog in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Colorado. I am continuing to answer questions submitted and um, feel free to submit a question to us on our website. If you go to theanimallawfirm.com, you will see a um, contact card on the website. You can submit a question on the contact card through our website and I will answer them on this video. Well, not this one, the next one. <laughs> um, so today's question is veterinary malpractice. Um, this particular questioner went to a veterinarian and um, turns out that, you know, and then the dog died as a result of the veterinarian's services or lack thereof. And then on top of it, the questioner found that this particular veterinarian's license was expired. Um, this raises a lot of good issues. So first of all, how do I check to see the history and the activity on my veterinarian's license. Almost all states have some sort of regulatory authority that governs license, professional licenses, veterinarians being one of them. Um, a lot of times it will also govern like accountants and uh, I don't know, I can't think of anybody else, but <laughs> usually if you look up veterinary board or veterinary license lookup or something like that in your state, it will usually come up under those or like veterinary license regulatory authority, it will come up there as well. Um, so anyway, if you do that Google search and then there's usually a form you can fill out and it asks you for like the first and last name of your veterinarian and then it should be able to pull up if there's been any disciplinary history on that particular veterinarian and how long their license has um, been effective or um, things like that. So, um, so that's a really good way to find out if your veterinarian has ever had any disciplinary history. Um, that is governed by, usually there's a veterinary board for each state and then um, if there's been any discipline for misconduct, then it will go on uh, the license through that veterinary board and it is searchable. So that takes care of that. Um, now, as far as veterinary malpractice, it's hard to determine if there's veterinary malpractice just like from this question. And it's hard to determine that just from talking to someone over the phone. I have to review the records and I'm not a veterinarian, so I can't necessarily certify that there was malpractice. Almost all states require that if you're going to bring veterinary malpractice claims against a veterinarian, you have to file what's called a certificate of merit. Some certificate of merits are very detailed, some are not. Some are just a piece of paper saying like, I veterinarian so-and-so certify that there was malpractice. And then they sign it, give it to the attorney and the attorney files it. Um, some require like some findings of fact as to why there was malpractice, but most don't. Most are pretty surface level. You just have to have done some basic investigation that there was the potential for malpractice in a case like this. I would recommend going to joeyslegacy.org. Um, this is a veterinary malpractice advocacy group. It's been around for, I think, seven years now. They're getting bigger. They have veterinarians all over the state who can review your records, determine if there was veterinary malpractice, and then write a, an opinion letter on their findings. So that is exceptionally helpful for attorneys like me who can then take that letter and use it as a basis to sue or use it as a basis to write a demand letter to insurance companies or to file a veterinary board complaint. You can file veterinary board complaints on your own. You don't need an attorney to do that. It's free. There's usually some sort of step-by-step -step process on, um, usually it's a Department of Agriculture, or sometimes it's the Department of Consumer Affairs, like New Jersey's Department of Consumer Affairs, Colorado is the Department of Regulatory Authority. I think Pennsylvania is the Department of Agriculture that governs this. Uh, I forget actually right now off the top of my head. But either way, you can do it yourself. It's free. All you have to do is just follow the steps online. And if you have that letter from Joey's Legacy, one of their veterinarians, then you can take that letter and use it as the basis for your vet board complaint, which is very helpful. That said, vet board complaints are, um, they take a long time. They can take six months to 12 months to resolve. And a lot of times the discipline, if the vet board finds that there's anything wrong with the veterinarian's conduct, like it's usually just a slap on the wrist. So I don't know that it's necessarily worth the time and effort and you certainly certainly shouldn't wait for the veterinary board to render a decision before you file a lawsuit or any, take any legal action. Like I said, it could take six to 12 months and sometimes um, that will eat into your statute of limitations. So you don't wanna do that. Um, 
But yeah, so that would be my recommendation is just going to Joey's Legacy and getting a veterinarian to review. And then you can come back and talk to me or talk to an attorney in your area who um, can decide, you know, give you the best options for moving forward in terms of what your legal options are. Typically it's just suing or writing a demand letter. Insurance companies are cracking down on these claims um, as of 2022 and 2023. I think it's because they're starting to see a higher incidence of them. So um, it's really hard to get the insurance company to pay out on veterinary malpractice claims anymore. So typically now we are recommending that people just move forward with a vet board complaint and or a lawsuit at the same time um, or, you know, one or the other. Um, so yeah, that is it. We have lots and lots of resources on our website regarding veterinary malpractice and what you can do to protect yourself, protect your pet. Um, I strongly recommend that everyone join Joey's Legacy just so you can kind of get an idea of what to watch for. They're on Facebook, they're a great group to get a part of. Um, and if you ever feel like making charitable donations, it's a 501c3, so you can um, you know, get tax deductions. Plus it's just a really good organization to support because they have so much free advice that they give to people anyway. You don't have to pay to be a part of the Facebook group, but I just really believe in their mission. And so I, you know, I like to support them and um, tell people to check them out because it is a good organization that's raising awareness in an area that most people didn't even know um, was a problem. So all of that said, um, I think that is it on veterinary malpractice. Like I said, check out our website for more information and, um, yeah, I will see you next time underdogs.